Hi there, in my last video when I made the uh, crank whips I didn't show any video of me making the uh, crank pin and the uh, front and rear crankshafts because uh, it's all very much uh, sort of basic machining really apart from one thing and that was to put a taper in the uh, front crankshaft so I'll show you a bit of video as to how I did that I don't intend making a video of the uh, bits that uh, fit into the uh, crank webs it's, a lot of it's just uh, machining uh, these uh, pieces of uh, silver steel down to the right size and uh, the, the, the only complicated one is the um, front end one and that needs a, a, a taper putting in here at a 10 degree angle and uh, it's quite fine so um, I'm actually I've, I've, I've opened this up with um, a drill for uh, an M4 thread and uh, to put this taper in, I've just uh, attached the procs on. So I've turned the compound slide to 10 degrees and I've got this little cutter here. And it seems to work. First time I've ever tried anything like this, but it does seem to work okay. I've just put a taper on the allen bolt, you can probably see it there. And when I tighten it up it uh, works really really well. And that's it tightened up. So I just thought that some of you might find that useful because uh, I had to think about that solution for quite a while. And in this video I'm going to have a go at making the conrods. Well I'm no model engineer designer but I just don't like the uh, design of these uh, conrods. Um, first of all um, they're made out of 2024 aluminium which is high tensile sort of aircraft style aluminium and I can only find two suppliers in the UK that sell this stuff and uh, I, none, neither of them um, sell it in the sort of correct dimensions so that's one negative uh, the other one is the uh, little ends don't have any bushes in them which I don't like and the bottom end here um, th this um, fits into this and the idea is that you have a bush that runs uh, on the crank pin so this bush has got an ID of um, 0.375 so it will hopefully run on the crank pin and it's got a, a, an outside diameter of 0.469 so the idea is that this is reamed to 0.472 to allow this to uh, run on the outside diameter of the bush and this is reamed to 0.468 which is a tighter fit so that will hold on to this bush um, but I'm just not convinced so I'm going to have a go at redesigning this so this is the design I've come up with and I, d I don't know whether it's the right term but I would call it an offset conrod <laughs> um, so you can see here I've put a center line in here and the big end is on the left of the center line but the small end is spot on center of the center line so that would mean that if you produce another one of these they should run alongside each other now um, the, the little end is slightly larger than the original design I think it should be okay so we've got an outside diameter here of half an inch it will ream to three eighths of an inch for a bush and then I'll ream the bush to a quarter of an inch now the big end, uh, I've made it into a split bush, uh, so that is far better than the original design and this will allow the uh, conrods to be taken off um, the crank pin um, or the crankshaft um, without having to disassemble the crankshaft. So that gives me an option when I make the crankshaft, when I assemble it up, I can probably use Loctite or something, something like that to make the crankshaft permanent. And uh, the, the big end um, will have uh, will be reamed to half an inch for a bush and then I'll ream it again once the bush is in there to three eighths of an inch. Um, so that's the plan. 
and uh, I've just th this is my um, sort of test that I did obviously I've not got split um, end bushes here because uh, this was an initial sort of design um, that's that's the sort of like the way it'll work like that if I can get it right yeah looks a bit off centre but in reality it should be spot on and I'll be making these out of uh, sort of common 608 to aluminium so I hope it'll be good enough and this is how I envisage it working Okay, so I've machined these two pieces of aluminium to the largest outside diameter of the conrod. So the total length is four inches. The distance between this join here and the top is 3.625 of an inch. The end caps here, which I've super glued on, are 0.375 of an inch. The width is uh, one inch. And the depth is, let me see, 0.4375 and I've shown these shaded areas that are going to be machined out and on the end you can see that the big end is offset here and uh, there's a couple of holes there that need to be drilled and tapped to an M3 thread which I'll do on the milling machine and at the same time I might just centre drill that centre point there just to give me some possible options if I need to uh, put it on the lathe later on. Okay so I've used an edge finder to find the centre point here and uh, using the ink memory on the DRO I've zeroed the X and Y settings and on this one here I've, I've used the, um, let me see, the abs memory and zeroed the X and Y values in the, abs set, in the abs memory. So that means that I can sort of use the same tooling. I don't have to use, you know, keep on swapping tooling around. Um, so these holes here are 0.375 of an inch from the centre point. So what I'll do first of all, I'll centre drill that and then I'll uh, centre drill these points. I'll do these uh, other three off camera. So this is a 2.5mm tapping drill for an M3 thread. And I'm going to go to a depth of, um, let me see, 0.75 of an inch. Do the other three off camera. And now to drill with this uh, M3 clearance drill, which is the 3.2 millimeter drill bit. And I'm wanting to go to a depth of uh, 0.375, which is the depth of this end cap. I'll do the other three off camera. Now it's just a matter of tapping the uh, threads in this lower part. So 
So before breaking the Loctite, um, I've just put some witness marks on here. So one at the top, one at the bottom, and then two on here. So I know which way round to go, and I put them back together. Okay, so this is a piece of bronze bar around about five eighths of an inch in diameter. And what I need to do is to cut a slot in here so I can make the split bushing. And uh, what I did first of all was I positioned this cutter so it just touched the top surface. And I used this uh, little lamp from the back just to see just when it touched. And when it did touch, I uh, zeroed the uh, DRO and then I moved uh, the cutter down and repeated the same process on the underside and uh, that gave me a measurement of I don't know 0 0.640 or something like that of an inch um, so I divided that measurement by two and I've brought um, the DRO, DRO up to that reading so that gives me exactly positioned on the midpoint of uh, this bar now I don't want to cut it on the mid on the midpoint this cutter is uh, 0 0.9 millimetres uh, in width. So what I need to do is I need to move it up uh, or down um, half of that amount, so 0 0.45 millimetres, which is actually uh, 0 0.018 of an inch. So now I can uh, start cutting the slot. Okay, so I've gone to a depth of uh, 0.65 of an inch, so that should give me enough to get to two pieces of a quarter of an inch width out of that. So the plan is to solder these together. Like that. So we're just going to use a bit of soft solder on this, so I've uh, put plenty of flux on. So we'll uh, put this bronze to one side for the moment and what I've done is I've broken the uh, Loctite seal on these cap ends and uh, used these temporary bolts, I've ordered some proper cap head ones um, and bolted them back up again, I'll have cleaned the faces before bolting them up. Um, so the idea now is to put uh, these in the vise and to drill and ream the big end and the small end. So I've put an end stop on the vise so I can uh, take the piece out and put it in, back in exactly the same place. Likewise uh, the other conrod. And uh, using an edge finder I found the centre of the vise jaws and then I found the edge here and I've uh, moved the table that way by 0.375 of an inch. And actually has put me spot on in the middle of um, that join. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just centre drill there and now 
If I move the table, three point three seven five of an inch. So what I need to do is I need to uh, drill and ream this to three eighths of an inch for a bush, and uh, drill and ream this half inch for a bush. But I'll do all that off camera. So now I need to make this uh, split end bush fit in there. I need to uh, machine some smaller bushes. So just doing a test fit and that's a nice tight fit. So that's about uh, one thou over the internal diameter of that. And uh, parting off just over a quarter of an inch in uh, width. Tighted in using Loctite 638, and uh, these are the big end bushes. And uh, again, I've put a dab of Loctite on these at the bottom, and uh, you can see that the join is in line with the uh, join of the uh, end cap. So I'll go over to the milling machine and I'll just uh, drill and ream these to spec, and uh, then I'll get back to you. Okay, so the reaming has gone okay, I think and uh, I've uh, remarked them up and uh, I think first of all I'm going to machine down these sides here and on reflection having looked at the drawing again I've decided I'm going to extend this overlap here by around about a quarter of an inch just to give it a bit more extra strength so that's in that area there so I think first of all what I'll do is I'll put them on the milling machine and uh, probably mill this section out here first of all. So before milling out this section I decided to uh, drill through various points here with a 6mm drill bit just to define the edge of the taper. So having done that, that will help me later on when I flip the part round. So I took 124 thou off that and this section here only needs 31 thou taking off it.
So I flipped it round and uh, now I need to take 124th out, out of this section here. That should leave me with point uh, 188 there. There's about 180th out to come off this section. So I got my maths wrong and I need it to take 218th out of this. So what I'll do now is uh, repeat exactly the same process on the other conrod. But I'll do that off camera. Well those have turned out okay I think. And to put the taper on uh, what I do is I uh, put these drill bits through these six millimetre holes and then I've got a piece of metal there and I drop the drill bits onto it and then I tighten the vise up and I can take the drill bits out. And I know now I can mill down to these points and I know I'll get a taper. Well, it seems to be going okay so far. I ended up taking 30 thou off each side of the little end and on this side I took about uh, on the big end of one side about 185 thou. So fairly central. So I need to go over to the uh, mill and the rotary table just to uh, finish the ends off covered a setup like this in a previous video so I won't go into detail and this is the little end Well the conrod seems to have turned out okay and the crankshaft is a bit tight at the moment, it's not properly assembled but the motion of the uh, conrods seems to be good and uh, having these split rod end bushes here allows me to uh, make this crankshaft more permanent and not having to rely on these bolts which to be honest are pretty rubbish. Well, I hope my redesign of these uh, conrods works out okay. I mean, they do look symmetrical, so I'm pretty happy with that. Uh, but I guess uh, we'll find out in real life once the uh, engine's assembled. Uh, but we're getting pretty close to completing the bottom end now. And I think the last thing to do, really, is to uh, make the flywheels for the uh, crankshaft. So uh, I'll be covering that in my next video, hopefully. Uh, but anyway, uh, I uh, hope you enjoyed the video, and I hope to see you later.